the 30 years old Christopher Hallaxis was born in Battle Creek, Michigan of United States. From the very start of his life, he enjoyed spending time in nature. His family had a remote cabin located in north of Michigan close to Two-Hearted River. He used to go to long hours of walking in the woods making his own trail. He had a favorite place inside of Lake Superior State Forest. It's a beautiful location to spend some alone time in nature. Chris never got married and worked different types of jobs such as brewery, public librarian and for a short period of time he worked as a computer technician where he complained about sitting on his butt and talking on the phone for 10 hours a day, 4 days a week. He didn't like the job and eventually moved on. Chris was in tune with nature and had the ability to live off the land. The only weapon he was known to carry was a large boy knife in a sheet on his right hip. He also carried the usual survivor accessories. On March 17th of 2004, Chris stopped at a local convenience store. He purchased soda and snacks and told the clerk that he was going out to his camp. Eventually, Chris was reported missing and the county sheriff and the Michigan State Police conducted an extensive search. A search and rescue team was at the scene as well and they found the Chris's snowshoe tracks and were able to follow him for several miles. The tracks led to a very tangled and dense wooded swamp area. Darkness started to set in and the search and rescue team called off the search. At the beginning, Chris's family wasn't too worried about his lack of contact. They knew he could live off the land and he actually stashed food in different spots in the woods in case of emergency. The next day, the search and rescue team found Chris's supplies that have been thrown around and displaced in the woods and a canteen on a belt was found lying on the ground. They also found a very well designed shelter which was in a good condition. Around the shelter, they found buckets of shoes, cups and plastic bags with different supplies scattered around the shelter area. The search team also had metal detector with them and found an expanded slug which concerned the search team since Chris wasn't known to carry firearms. It's worth mentioning there are similar disappearances at this exact location of wilderness. Chris was never found and nobody knows what happened to him. The Dunton family lived in Fitzwilliam City in New Hampshire of United States. It's a rural area with dozens of swamps and five state forests surrounding it. On October 7th of 1947, Mrs. Dunton was getting her 12 children seated for dinner when the family realized that 3 years old Louis was missing. The family checked the backyard where he was last playing but couldn't find him. They informed the law enforcement immediately and there was 100 men on the scene by 10 p.m. of the same night that Louis went missing. The searchers grabbed some torches and started yelling the boy's name but there was no response. At around 1 a.m. a bloodhound dog was at the scene and the sheriff led it to sniff one of the Louis's shoe and immediately it started running. The path the dog took was not easy. It ran through a nearby swamp for two straight miles. It took the sheriff and searchers one hour to get through the swamp. At almost 2 a.m., the dog found a small animal trail, walked a few feet out of the swamp and stopped next to a large group of bushes. A short distance off the trail, the sheriff shined his light into the area and saw little Louis sitting completely naked under the bush. His legs were under some leaves up to his knees, which kept his feet a bit warm, but his body was dry and not wet at all. The weather was cold and they never found any of Louis's clothes in the area. Why would he remove his clothes in middle of cold weather? When they tried to ask the boy about his disappearance, he kept smiling and thought all of this was a joke. The only thing he mentioned was collecting blueberries during his disappearance. How Louis got through two miles of swamp in just few hours and why he removed his clothes are the questions we're never going to get answers for. <music> the 
The 17 years old Corey Fay was a junior in high school when he decided to join some of his friends for elk hunting in a region west of Tyke Valley. Corey had training in outdoor survival and had hunted in the past. He knew what to do in case of emergency or if he ever was lost. He carried an emergency solar blanket, a compass, extra food, ammunition, a small backpack and a rifle. Corey and his two friends arrived at their hunting location at noon and decided to split up until 6.30 pm when they agreed to arrive back at the vehicle. That was the last time anyone saw Corey. It was a cold afternoon and the group didn't find any else to hunt, although one of Corey's friends later stated they were in the right location where he knew there was elks, but somehow they didn't see any. When Corey didn't arrive at the set location to meet with his friends, they called the sheriff for assistance. A total of 250 men, 7 of the best trained search dogs and helicopters searched the area for 10 days, but they didn't find a single trace of Corey. On December 3rd, the search for Corey was officially terminated but volunteers kept looking around still. The sheriff department was so puzzled by lack of evidence that they contacted the FBI and asked for their assistance. On September of 1992, around 10 months after Corey's disappearance, two hunters were hunting 10 miles from where Corey was last seen. When they found his backpack and his rifle, they also found his jacket one mile from his other belongings. The hunters contacted authorities and later they found small bone fragments and one tooth which belonged to Corey. The location he was found was 3000 feet higher in elevation than where he was last seen and 10 miles from the point he should have been hunting. Now there is a small river in this area and when the reporters asked Corey's grandpa to give his thought on the incident, he stated Corey was trained to follow a stream downhill if he ever became lost. That's weird because it seems like Corey just did the opposite of that. They never found Corey's boots, pants or socks. When press asked one of the rangers who helped to find Corey's clothes about his disappearance, he stated it boggled his mind why they didn't find Corey's boots. He said he has always found the shoes with the bodies he recovered. It's also worth mentioning that searchers didn't find any skull or any large bones of Corey in the area. Why would Corey get rid of his backpack and rifle when they are essential to survival? And why didn't he use his rifle when he was missing to help the searchers find him? What happened to Corey in the forest of Tyke Valley remains a mystery to this day.